concave up, concave down, and inflection points of f of x. The learning goals for this video are to be able to identify potential inflection points of f of x, and then to determine whether or not a potential inflection point is an actual inflection point. So first let's define what we mean by concave up and concave down. We say a function is concave up on some interval if f prime is increasing on that interval. So in these two illustrations we see two different cases where we have a low positive slope changing into a high positive slope and the case of a high negative slope increasing to become a low amplitude negative slope. So in both of these cases f prime is increasing. We say a function is concave down on some interval if f prime is decreasing on that interval and so here you see similar two cases for negative slopes, we have a low negative value becoming a large negative value, and that corresponds to a decreasing f prime, and a high positive value becoming a low positive value, which also corresponds to f prime decreasing. So these two are concave up, these two are concave down. So in that definition, there was no reference to f double prime, but as you may know, f double prime does have a connection with concavity. So how do we draw that connection? If we consider a function whose slope is increasing, so we expect this to be, or well, we, we, we've defined this to be concave up, but we can also show that f prime, f double prime, has to be positive. So let's do that. If we evaluate f prime at x plus h, then we know its value has to be larger than at x, provided h is positive, and then we can take the difference and show that that must be positive. Now when we divide this by h and take a limit as h goes to 0, we get the definition of the second derivative of f. And because the numerator must be positive, the limit has to also be positive. And for a technical reason, it's possible that that limit ends up being 0, but I won't discuss that here. So, although I'm not going to discuss it either, we can just make the claim that f double prime being positive implies in the other direction that f prime is increasing and that f as a result f is concave up. So what we have here is um, a complete connection between the slope increasing and f double prime being positive. So we can also do something similar for the slope decreasing and concave down and it follows a similar argument and the picture is just slightly modified. So let's define what an inflection point is. It's, it's defined in terms of concavity. An inflection point of f is a point at which the concavity changes either from up to down or from down to up. So there's a more practical way of dealing with this definition and that is um, we have that an inflection point at x equal a of a function f of x must be either a local minimum or a local maximum of f prime of x. So how do we get that? So if we draw an f prime of x that has a local minimum, what should the function from which this came look like? So the first thing we notice is that the slope is low angle at first, gets more and more steep, and then hits the steepest, the most negative it's going to get, and then returns back to a low negative angled slope. So that's illustrated by a function like this. We have a low negative slope getting steeper and steeper, larger in the negative direction, and then mellowing out again. And this point here corresponds to the steepest it ever gets, where f prime is at the min. We can also consider an f prime that is all positive but still has a min, in which case we have a function that starts off with a large positive slope mellows out and gets as flat as it's going to get and then continues to get steeper again and that inflection point right here where the concavity change corresponds to the lowest point the derivative ever achieves. The third scenario is where we have all positive slopes, we're above the x-axis but now there's a maximum in f prime and so we can see in this function f of x above it we have a low positive slope initially that increases, gets steeper and steeper until we hit a maximum steepness right here, 
and then it mellows out again, getting a smaller positive slope. And the last possibility is that we have a maximum in f prime, but all the slopes are negative. And so that picture looks like this, where we have a steep negative slope initially, which mellows out to a mellow no negative slope, and then continues to get, once again, very steep in the negative direction. So all of these are different types of inflection points, but they all have the feature that their concavity switches. Here we have concave down to concave up, concave down to concave up, concave up to concave down, and concave up to concave down. So how do we find these? Well, we know how to find local mins and maxes of a function, and here we're just dealing with a function that happens to be the derivative of the one we started with. So that means to find potential inflection points, which is potential mins and maxes, we just look for the critical points of the function f prime. So a potential inflection point is a point a at which f double prime of a is equal to zero. This will not necessarily be an inflection point, but if f double prime changes sign at the point, then we know that it is an inflection point. So we can figure this out by simply plugging in values to f double prime on either side of the zero and see if the sign has changed. If the sign doesn't change, then the potential IP of the potential inflection point is not an actual inflection point. And again, we can test this to see if the sign changes by plugging in values on either side of the zero. Now, as we saw with the mins and maxes of f, there is another way which is not commonly used, but we could determine whether uh, we have an actual inflection point by looking at the third derivative of f at the potential inflection point. And if the third derivative of f is not equal to zero, that means that it must be either, the second derivative must be either increasing as it goes through zero or decreasing, which means there is a change of sign and we do have an inflection point. If the third derivative is equal to zero, we have not enough information and we have to go back to evaluating the sign change by plugging in values. So to summarize both of these two videos, we use f prime to determine the intervals of increase and decrease of a function. We solve f prime of x equals zero to find potential extrema, and then check that f prime changes sign at that point. And to do that, we can either plug in values or we can check to see if f double prime is either positive or negative. Then we use f double prime to determine intervals of, 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 of consistent concavity. And when we find points at which f double prime is zero, we know we have potential inflection points. Then we have to check to see if f double prime changes sign or not to see if these are actual inflection points.